ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده فلا فاد من يهده فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وعد الأمانة ونسه الأمة وجهد في الله حق جهادي صلى الله عليه ولعاله وصحبه ومن تبيه إلا يوم الدين والسلام تسليما كثيرا أما بعد We begin my brothers and sisters by emptying our hearts and minds from all of the thoughts of our lives all of our emotions and passions that fill our hearts and trouble us and bother us. Leave them behind with our shoes as we step into a space that is empty of everything, but that which cannot be emptied, namely the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This exercise and exercise of letting go is the very definition of the nature of submission. That quality of submission, which allows us, which opens us up to being informed and thereby taught and instructed by our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one and only God. Nothing is like God who has no partner. It is in making this step from the multiplicities and the multiple distractions of our lives into the space of union, union the space of unity, where we focus our attention where we focus our feelings and our sentiments on the ultimate objective of our purpose of life, the knowledge that there is only one ultimate goal to which we are all returning and traveling. That goal, which is also our origin from which we all originated and came. It is in making this step from the domain of multiplicity into the domain of unity that gives meaning and gives life to our shahada La ilaha illallah, to our testimony of faith, faith that is grounded and defined by the absolute oneness and the unicity of Allah. And as we enter into the safe space of proximity with God, we find everything and anything that is inconsistent with that purity of being and the purity of oneness we are forced to let go of. That as we bear witness to the oneness of God, and as we try to increasingly assimilate in our behavior, our understanding, our choices, the meaning of la ilaha illallah. We find that it pushes out all aspects of duality, and we are forced into the recognition that deep within our being lies a reality, a voice, a presence that we recognize is that of God. A presence that, according to the Quran, is closer to us than our jugular vein, as Allah says in Surah Kaf, verse 16. نَحْنُ أَقْرُبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبْلِ الْوَرِيدِ A presence that, if we hold on to, gives meaning to the urwatul wuska, that rope which does not break, that rope which holds us, maintains us, anchors us throughout all the vicissitudes of our life, gives meaning to our lives enriches us and gives us light. Thus, brothers and sisters, are some of the implications of the shahada, la ilaha illallah. A shahada that is completed by testifying that our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his beloved servant and messenger. And in this shahada, in this second shahada, we not only delineate the absoluteness of our worship of the one, and our commitment to a path of unity, but at the same time declare our commitment to following in the tradition, the sunnah, the teachings that were all embodied in the exemplary and exemplary behavior and mode of worship of this great soul, Muhammad وسلم, whose na very name means the soul that is highly praised, praised by Allah and by the angels, if not by all of humanity. For Allah has said, Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Surely 
Allah asserts God and his angels called lessons upon the Prophet. And this Salah of Allah and of the angels is more than just a statement. It is an acknowledgement of a particular bond between Allah and Muhammad. We cannot compare, brothers and sisters, our expressions of Allahumma Sayyidina Muhammad. We cannot equate my and your saying of salah upon the Prophet to what it means when Allah says that he does salah upon Muhammad. In fact, the reality of that statement is, uh, is way beyond perhaps our ability to even fully comprehend. And that the angels do salah upon Muhammad. Without exception. There's not a single angel in the realm of angelic beings who says, God, leave me out of this. But we know for a fact that there are many, many human beings who reject Muhammad. So this dissonance, this fragmentation of reality should make us think about what it means when God pronounces and asserts his own declaration of salah upon the soul of Muhammad and what therefore it should invoke within us. If we can truly begin to comprehend what it means for the creator of the heavens to say, I have a special attachment to this soul. And those of us who believe in God, who believe that we are creatures created by this almighty being, what does it imply in terms of our adab, in terms of our attitude, in terms of our behavior to this embodiment of Allah Salah? This gives additional meanings or insights as to how we are to regard Muhammad, not as an object of worship, no doubt, but as an object of love, as an object of trying to exemplify in our own behavior, in our own ikhlaq, those of Rasulullah, who was sent according to the Quran, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ as Allah mentions in Surah Anbiya, verse 107. Except as a mercy, as a source of compassion to humanity. In fact, some tafsir, alamin is translated to all of the worlds, not just limited to just humankind. The mercy of Muhammad is much more expansive, much more than what we can perceive and that their four brothers and sisters. We should not have any other defining aspect of our own being and also being a source of compassion, not just to humanity, but to all creatures. The Prophet on his own tongue said, I was not sent except to exemplify makarma ikhlaq, as he said, the perfection of nobility of behavior, of ethics, of ethical behavior, of righteous behavior. And what embraces this behavior? What is its source? What is its origin? Not just theologically, but spiritually, but historically. Allah says in the end of Surah Al Hajj in verse 73, Ya Yohannas, O people, O humanity, O oh, mankind. So when Allah says Ayyuhan Nas, he is not just addressing only to the believers, he is speaking to all of humanity. He doesn't say, Ya Ayyuhan Muslimin, O you Muslims, or Ya Ayyuhan Mu'mineen, or Ya Ayyuhan Lazina Amanu, or you who believe. Ya Ayyuhan Nas Duriba Masadun. I shall give you a parable. Or a parable is made so literally. Therefore, listen to it. But Fastami means not just hear it, it says pay attention, think about it. Those whom you call, those whom you pray to, those who make dua to other than Allah, cannot even create a fly, even though all these other things that you pray to and worship or to cooperate together. They couldn't even create a fly. All these things that you worship other than Allah, whether it's human being, whether it's an idol, whether it's a concept, none of these things can create one of the least respected items in creation. And if the fly would have inflict afflict any of these people or these objects of your worship with something, they're not even able to defend themselves. How weak, 
how important, how incapable is the one who is making dua to something other than Allah and that whom you are idolizing and worshiping. So do not worship that which is weak. Do not worship that which is incapable of defending. And Allah concludes, They have not measured. Qadara means to measure. But it also means he did not give Allah his due. You did not understand God with the right kind of understanding, the right measure of understanding. They have not measured God with the right measure. They have not given Allah his due. That is the lament that God makes in the Quran. So brothers and sisters, before we laugh off and say, we know people who think of other gods or worship other gods, let us think of ourselves first. How many of us truly give God his due? How many of us, how many of us worship Allah as he deserves to be worshipped? How many of us think of Allah in the way he should be thought of? In fact, we are taught to mention in our prayers, at the end of our prayers, at the end of our acts of worship, not only to say astaghfirullah, to acknowledge our incapability to worship Allah as he deserves to be worshipped. Allah continues a couple of verses down in verse 77. And now he addresses the believers. Ya yuhal lazina amanu. O you who have believed. O you who have faith. Aruka'u wasjudu wa hudu rabbukum. Bow down to Allah. To sajda before Allah. And worship your Lord. Wafalul khaira la'allakum tuflihun. And do which is good. That you might become successful. That you may succeed. And in verse 78 goes on, وَجَّهِدُوا فِي اللَّهِ حَقَّ جِهَادِي And strive hard for the sake of Allah. With this striving that God deserves. Now this is somewhat of a blanket statement, so it addresses all aspects of our being. It means think of Allah. Strive hard to make your attitude, your ideas, your thinking of God is what God deserves and how God deserves to be thought of. Make sure your acts of worship are as much as possible the way God deserves to be worshipped. Protect God's rights vis-a-vis -vis creation, the way God's rights deserve to be protected. So you can apply. It's a concept to be applied in all the ways that are at our disposal. And yet Allah additionally states, Allah, he is the one who has chosen you. He has chosen you for faith and in the process has not obliged you with any hardship. Now, Allah does not expect you to do more than what you can do. Surah Baqarah, he states in verse 286. Allah will not oblige you to more than what you can do or what he knows you can do. He expects you to do. You all know this when you are a teacher or a parent, you have a child or a student, you have different expectations from each of your children, from your students. Um, you have different expectations because you know the capacity of each of your students. What one is capable of, what the other person is not capable of. And if that person says, well, I did better than so and so, we'll say, but that person is not as capable as you are. I expect more from you than I expect of that individual. And therefore, we should judge ourselves not by others, but we should judge ourselves by the capacity that we know we have. And we all know that ourselves deep inside. Millata abikum Ibrahim. Milla is a very often translated as the faith of your father Abraham, the tradition of your father Abraham, the creed, the ideology, the attitude, the example of your father Abraham. Islam is defined as an Abrahamic faith. And you have heard Imam Faisal say many times in his khutbah that Islam was not founded by Muhammad, وسلم, but founded by Ibrahim. Mecca was established by Ibrahim. The Kaaba was built by Ibrahim, the call to Hajj 
was enunciated by Sayyidina Ibrahim. Millat Abikum Ibrahim, the precedent, the faith tradition, whatever you want to call it of your father Abraham. He is the one who named you Muslims. Muslimina, from before and in this. And what does this before and this mean? And who is Hua? Does Hua refer to Abraham? Abraham, or does it refer to Allah? The general majority of the opinion of the scholars is that Hua here refers to Allah, who has called you Muslims from before and also in the Quran. But it is also possible to interpret this verse as meaning Abraham also is the one who has named his faith that of submission. In other words, we should look at Muslims not with the capital M, but with the small m, meaning he's the one who called you submitters. Not that he called you Muslims, that he gave you the name Muslims because it's a nice sounding name. No, he called you those who submit to Allah, the submitters. Can you think of yourself as if somebody asks, what is your religion? And you reply by saying, my religion is submission. Because now the word Muslim has become like a proper noun. We don't think of it as a meaning. We don't think of its meaning. We think of it as a name. Like my name is Junaid, somebody's name is Ali and so and so. A name is just, just a sound. We do not think of the meaning of it. But in the context of the Quran and in the context of Allah, names are not just sounds, names are meanings. So when God tells us in the Quran, Adam al Asma, in Surah Baqarah in verse 31, that he taught Adam the names, he just doesn't mean, oh yeah, this person is so and so. Uh, it's not that kind of name. Because to Allah, names define the quality of something, the meaning of something. So the name Muhammad has a meaning and the name Muslim has a meaning. So with God, it's not the label which has value. It's not Muslim, Christian, Jew, no, because that's just the sound. With God, it's the meaning of submission. And you can submit to God regardless of what you call yourself. And why did he call you submitters? Who were some kumul muslimina min qablu wa fi haza. And in the Quran, or in this current context, li, the word li means, so in order that li, li yakuna rasulu, in order that the messenger may be a witness upon you, or a witness against you, shahidan alaykum, means a witness who will testify to what you did of good or of wrong. So submission to God requires us to become aware of our obligational mandate as witnesses for the sake of the almighty creator against all things that we are made to witness. So the prophet will be a witness to you in it so that you may be a witness to humanity. Therefore, fa, that means thus or because of this, then fa'aqimu salata wa'atu zakata. So establish salah, your prayer. Wa'atu zakat, and give for your purification. Wa'atasimu billahi, and hold fast to Allah. Billah, hold on to God. There's another verse in Surah Imran, verse 103, where Allah mentions Wa'atasimu bihablillah, holding on to the rope of Allah. But in this verse in Surah Hajj, talking about holding on to God. That presence which is closer to you than your jugular vein. Huwa maulakum, he is your protector. He is your maula. Allah is your protector. Not anything else, not anybody else. That kind of trust in Allah, brothers and sisters, let me say, starting with my own self, I don't know how much I know. I know the limits of my own trust in Allah. I don't trust God as much as I should. But trust in God, he is your trustee. He is your mawla, he is your protector. Na'ma means how wonderful, how, how beautiful something is. So when you say na'ma al-mawla, 
means what a protector is God. What ni'man nasir, what a helper nasir, means help which gives you victory. The kind of help which makes sure you come out on top. The ability to trust in God, brothers and sisters, the ability to have faith, the faith as a Christian brother would say that moves mountains. The faith that moves the hearts of human beings because it is sometimes easier to move a mountain than it is to move the heart of a human being. It is this capacity to move a heart of a human being that defines the prophet. It is this capacity to move the heart of a human being that defines Pairo Ummatin in Nas, as Allah mentions in Surah Imran in verse 110, the best community that humanity has brought forth. You are the best community, not because you call yourselves Muslims, but because you embody Makarma Ikhlaq, the, the best kind of behavior, the best kind of ethics. It is that ensemble of ethics, brothers and sisters, that defines the Sunnah of Muhammad. It is that ensemble of behavior, the capacity to transform the hearts of men and women that defines the nature of prophethood of all the prophets. And for those of us who want to embrace the Sunnah of Muhammad, who want to embody what we call the Nur of Muhammad, the light. And what is the light of Muhammad? It's not just you know, some kind of, you know, high intensity halogen bulb, you know, you have all the power you want. It's not that kind of light which trans it's, that transforms the hearts of human beings. It's a, it is the light of the spirit, the character of a human being. It is this character and the strength of character, the strength of will and the strength of your grip to Allah. And as I earlier mentioned, what does it mean? What's the mean? billahi and hold on to God. It also means to hold on to the attributes of Allah. Allah is the absolute truth. So holding on to the truth and dismissing all, all falsehood. Allah is not falsehood. So if you are holding on to falsehood, you're not holding on to God. Trust and falsehood are mutually exclusive. You can't have both. Allah is kataba rabbukum ala nafsihi rahma. As he states in Surah Anam in verse 54. Allah on himself has decreed compassion and mercy. So if you do not decree upon yourself as a result of your choice, compassion and mercy, you have not held on to Allah. So holding on to God is for many of us a concept translated brothers and sisters into simple acts of behavior. That is what wa'tasimu billahi means. Because if it doesn't mean that, then what meaning is there to holding on to Allah? It is that recognition, brothers and sisters, which is defines, which enlivens religion, which gives meaning to which to what it means to be a submitter. We pray to the Almighty Creator that He helps us in our attempt to perfect ourselves as submitters to God and to only God without partners. Brothers and sisters, let us pray to Allah that he accept our supplications. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina Muhammad, inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله يعمر بالعدل وإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يا إزاكم لعلكم تذكرون إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تسمعون وأقيموا الصلاة. إقامة بروس. <تصفيق>